Hello and welcome to Fern Hill's book at bedtime. I'm Mrs Tarbutton and I'm going to be reading to you this evening. So grab yourself a hot drink and snuggle up for the last part of chapter seven. Once upon a time there were three little sisters. The Dormouse began in a great hurry and their names were Elsie, Lacey and Tilly and they lived at the bottom of the well. What did they live on? said Alice, who always took a great interest in questions of eating and drinking. They lived on treacle, said the Dormouse, after thinking for a minute or two. They couldn't have done that, you know, Alice gently remarked. They'd have been ill. So they were, said the Dormouse, very ill. Alice tried to fancy to herself what such an extraordinary ways of living would be like. But it puzzled her too much and she went on. But why did they live at the bottom of a well? Take some more tea, the March Hare said to Alice very earnestly. I've had nothing yet, replied Alice in an offended tone, so I can't take more. You mean you can't take less, said the Hatter. It's very easy to take more than nothing. Nobody asked your opinion, said Alice. Who's making personal remarks now? The Hatter asked triumphantly. Alice did not quite know what to say. So she helped herself to some more tea and some bread and butter and then turned to the Dormouse and repeated her question. Why did they live at the bottom of a well? The Dormouse again took a minute or two to think about it and then said, it was a treacle well. There's no such thing, Alice was beginning very angrily, but the Hatter and the March Hare went shh and the Dormouse sulkily remarked, if you can't be civil, you'd better finish the story for yourself. No, Please go on, Alice said very humbly. I won't interrupt again. I, I dare say there may be one. One indeed, said the Dormouse indignantly. However, he consented to go on. And so these three little sisters, they were learning to draw, you know. What did they draw? said Alice, quite forgetting her promise. Treacle said the Dormouse, without considering at all this time. I want to clean up, interrupted Hatter. Let's all move on one place. He moved as he spoke, and the Dormouse followed him, and the March Hare moved into Dormouse's place, and Alice rather unwillingly took the place of the March Hare. The Hatter was the only one who got any advantage from the change and Alice was a good deal worse off than before as the March Hare had just upset the milk jug into his plate. Alice did not wish to offend Dormouse again so she began very cautiously. But I don't understand, where did they draw the treacle from? You can draw water out of a well, said the Hatter. So I think you could draw treacle out of a treacle well, eh, stupid? But they were in the well, Alice said to the Dormouse, choosing not to notice the last remark. Of course they were, the Dormouse said. Well in. This answer so confused poor Alice that she let Dormouse go on for some time without interrupting. They were learning to draw, the Dormouse went on, yawning and rubbing its eyes, for it was getting very sleepy. And they drew all manner of things, everything that begins with an M. With an M, said Alice. Why with an M? Why not, March Hare said. Alice was silent. The Dormouse closed its eyes and was going off into a doze, but on being pinched by the Hatter, 
it woke up again with a little start and went on. That begins with an M, such as mouse traps and the moon and memory and muchness. You know, you say things are much of a muchness. Did you ever see such a thing as a drawing of a muchness? Really? Now you ask me, said Alice, very much confused. I, I don't think I... Then you shouldn't talk, said the Hatter. This piece of rudeness was more than Alice could bear. She got up in great disgust and walked off. The Dormouse fell asleep instantly and neither of the others took the least notice of her going. Though she looked back once or twice, half hoping they would call after her. The last time she saw them, they were trying to put Dormouse in the teapot. At any rate, I'll never go there again, said Alice, as she picked her way through the wood. It's the stupidest tea party I was ever at in all my life. Just as she said this, she noticed that one of the trees had a door leading right into it. That's very curious, she thought. But everything's curious today. I think I may as well go in at once. And with that, she went in. Once more she found herself in the long hall and close to the little glass table. Now, I'll manage better this time, she said to herself, and began by taking the little golden key and unlocking the door that led into the garden. Then she went to work nibbling at the mushroom. She had kept a piece of it in her pocket till she was about a foot high. Then she walked down the little passage and then she found herself at last in a beautiful garden among the bright flower beds and the cool fountains.